วัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่งาน NASA Open House Speed Up Your Business b i t Talk About Tech การขับเคลื่อนธุรกิจด้วยเทคโนโลยีแล้ววันนี้นะคะเรามีโอกาสได้มาพบกับผู้บริหารสูงสุด CEO บริษัท h o w e i t e c h n o l o g y ประเทศไทยจำกัดคุณอาเบลเติ้งจะมาแชร์วิสัยทัศน์และข้อมูลที่ h o w e i t ได้สนับสนุน Digital Transformation ในประเทศไทยวันนี้เขาอยู่กับเราแล้วค่ะสวัสดีครับ Uh, thank you for uh, joining us next uh, 2021, and I have a very very important question. Like uh, uh, the leading company as Huawei, as in two years already, we saw COVID-19 pandemic around the world. So um, the first question is, uh, how impacted COVID-19 to SME in the global point of view for um, for our Earth? Thank you for your question, uh, Kunju. I think, as we all know, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought in a huge impact to the global economy. Uh, Huawei has recently re released a Global Connectivity Index 2020 research report last month. According to the JCI report, which we studied the economic performances and ICT investment of 79 countries, under the pandemic situation. Uh, we discovered that the average annual GDP of 79 countries shrinked and declined by 7%. But we also found that those countries who uh, adopted the digital economy technologies and also with higher GCI scores were able to react and respond faster than other countries uh, under the pandemic. They can use the digital tools and the services to lease the impact of lockdown and social distancing. Due to the availability of the high speed uh, bandwidth, the cloud services, the AI technologies, and also the IoT solutions, they can quickly implement the distributed workforce model and also migrate to e-commerce platforms. And so digitally, they transform their operations to maintain the business continuity. Uh, we can also see the forecasted decline of those countries uh, is about 50% lower than the emerging countries with, with lower GCI scores. Uh, when we look at the Thailand, Thailand ranks at, at 46th uh, place with a slightly higher economy performance than the average declining or by 7%. If we look at the SMEs, when you talk about specifically, According to a, an OECD report, COVID, coronavirus SME policy responses, the SMEs are mostly affected by the COVID-19 situation, uh, even worse and greater than the other entities and sectors, which includes like uh, the transportation manufacturing, construction, the wholesale and retail trade, the accommodations and the food services, also the professional services, especially those personal services like the hairdressing. They are also quite slower in terms of business recovery. We discovered in Thailand as well, we found that the decline of the uh, economies for SME sector is 4% higher than the average of the total GDP. For example, in 2020 Q3, we discovered that the Thailand GDP declined by 8%, but the SME sectors declined for almost 12%. We discovered a, an interesting um, situation that in some countries like uh, Germany, like uh, South Korea, like China, the SME sector, they even got uh, significant positive growth in in past year, which was quite outstanding. Like in Germany, the GDP declined by 5% in 2020, but 25% of Germany's technology companies, which are mostly SMEs, they achieved 1% of the growth in the whole year. They can maintain their business by increasing investment in digital tools, also, they even expanding these products and services to the new international markets. Uh, let's look at the China as well. The SMEs can quickly start their business transformation and now use a variety of third-party platforms, 
uh, which they try to connect the supply and the demand side. So they can quickly adjust their production, also the supply chains, for example, on the third party digital platforms. Uh, like uh, after COVID-19, they quickly switched to product of the personal pro protective equipment to fight against the COVID-19 as China now supports and product it. Uh, most of the PPEs which uh, supply to the whole world. So uh, in the world, we found that it's almost a consensus of the whole industry that the digital transformation is the key for the SMEs to recover and grow up under the new norm of COVID-19. Thank you for your answer. It's kind of very, very clear. And uh, we can see that COVID-19 very impacted, not for SME, but for the uh, overall of the country. And we know that it's very hard for us, 1% increasing. And now we can see many, many leading country and also developing country that uh, the GDP dropped uh, for uh, many, many percent. Okay, so I think uh, we go to the second questions. So I think if the um, impact is kind of huge, but I can see some uh, something that uh, it's a size that today we need technology to help us to survive, not just for uh, growth, but to survive and recover after COVID. So um, how about digital transformation for the global point of view that uh, Huawei thinking that SME in global can uh, do the digital transformations? Uh, I think uh, to facilitate the digital transformation of SMEs, we need to solve out maybe the major challenges and uh, the main problems first. According to what we have absorbed, maybe there are some challenges which we are facing. The first one is, uh, how to raise up the general awareness of the digital transformation for the SMEs. Uh, according to the OSMEP, which is the Office of SMEs Promotion in Thailand, almost 70% of the SMEs in Thailand, they do not use the digital platforms and uh, the digital service and tools for their business. But if we look at like Singapore, the advanced countries nearby, uh, there are 80% of Singapore SMEs are willing to embrace the digital transformations. So there's a big room which we need to improve. The second one is we think it's the application of services on the digital infrastructures. According to the 2020 IMD World Competitiveness Yearbook released, Thailand has a good position, but if we look at the use of the digital tools and technologies, uh, we ranks on the 39th place or among the 63 countries. Take for example for 5G. Now Thailand is leading in 5G uh, in terms of the digital infrastructures. We have more than 10,000 sites already, which makes Thailand the number one in the whole ASEAN regime. But we also realized that there is only 2% of the users who are now using the 5G technologies. So the challenge is to how to realize the business process and develop the digital services based on the digital infrastructures and make the SMEs to adopt that. We need more, for sure, the developers, the digital platforms, as system integrators to bring in more services and applications on that. The third one, I think the challenge is based on the future readiness towards the cloud computing. We all know the importance of the cloud computing for the future business because it's flexible, it's agile, it also ne just needs low initial investment, which matches very well to all the SMEs. So we can also see globally many countries have already setting up the performance indicators around the world to measure and to facilitate the cloud computing technologies adoption to the SMEs. But we can see till now uh, in our uh, studies, only less than 50% of the SMEs are willing to uh, develop 
their plans to embrace or to be on the digital, uh, you know, uh, com cloud computing and digital technologies. The fourth uh, challenge is about the ecosystem. Uh, we need a lot of uh, developers, uh, the system integrators, to form a real ecosystem in the digital uh, economy, which the local digital ecosystem can also understand better the needs, demands, and how to have the SMEs for the development. Uh, in Thailand, we can, we can see that according to the IMD, uh, competitiveness report in 2020, the digital talent and also digital knowledge only ranks at the 43rd place out of the 63 countries, which indicates that uh, the talent as part of the ecosystem is also a place which we need to improve together. Okay. From the previous question, I see it's many challenges for digital transformation. So, uh, if I ask you a suggestion to adopt it, uh, digital to accelerate SME company or uh, to recover the business by digital. So, what do you think? Uh, thank you, Kunju. I think, firstly, we strongly suggest that the government uh, can apply more policies and initiatives to the SMEs to motivate them to move towards the digital transformation. And uh, we're so glad to see that recently the government has published a lot of uh, initiatives and policies uh, regarding to motivate the SMEs by OSMEP. And we're looking forward to the effect of that. The secondly, we think uh, actually that competition between the regions, between different countries of the digital transformation has already begun. We saw some countries in ASEAN even have kicked off the policies in terms of the financial, technical, and the talents to try to accelerate the digitalization for the country and also especially for the SMEs. So from Huawei's point of view, uh, Thailand can set up even higher goal to attract more talents, more funds, more ecosystem, more uh, enterprises to come to Thailand to invest together to move towards this digital transformation. Uh, we're glad to see that last year the government and the private sectors, the whole industry have come to the consensus that Thailand should move towards the Thailand 4.0, especially to become the ASEAN digital hub. So we think to become the ASEAN digital hub, we need to be excellence across four main dimensions, uh, including the connectivity hub, including the data center and the cloud hub, including the ecosystem hub, and also the talent hub. Uh, we believe that by 2030, the digital economy will take up, will take up of 30% of the total GDP of Thailand. Even earlier years, we expect that to be heaven. And uh, at that time, we expect that 90% of the new digital economy, digital GDP will be contributed by mostly the SMEs. So that's why we think the importance is to try to drive Thailand and move towards the ASEAN digital hub, which we are also empower the SMEs digital transformation. Thank you for mention about Asian digital hub in Thailand. And we have a wish that 2030, nine, nine years left, we can reach that kind of goals. Um, and I think a government like NASDA, we also have a many, many mechanisms to support SME to adopt a digital uh, solution in their, um, in their company. But when we talk about national agenda like a digital, Asian digital hub, so you think what benefit if Thailand becomes Asian digital hub? Okay. Uh as we would like to see, uh, to drive Thailand towards the ASEAN Digital Hub, we are aiming to uh, improve the digital competitiveness for Thailand and even beyond the Thailand. Which means, if Thailand becomes a digital hub, it will have the SMEs to develop more opportunities and extend to other markets in the region to help SMEs to do business through the digital platforms 
in the international market. We expect that the percentage of SMEs exports to increase by 3% to reach like 70% very soon by this process. Secondly, I think uh, the ASEAN Digital Hub will also attract more regional and international capitals and funds to come to Thailand. Uh, it can also attract more talents. As we said just now, uh, according to the IMD uh, report, Thailand ranks around 43 place in terms of the talents and uh, digital knowledge. So this is the, a room we need to improve. By becoming the digital hub of ASEAN region, uh, for sure it can attract more and more uh, talents to join us for in this industry. So sadly, I think to become the ASEAN Digital Hub, as we talk about the ecosystem uh, hub, so it can attract more and more regional uh, software developer, the system integrator, and also digital service providers to try to move to Thailand or try to develop their business in Thailand, which for another hand, they can also help to empower the local SMEs to help to create more technology SMEs in those in the whole industry, which bring more possibilities for us to empower more digital transformations to all our startups and SMEs. So to conclude, to being part of the ASEAN Digital Hub, the SMEs will find more and more new opportunities in Thailand and the whole region market, even in the international markets. Also, they have more possibility to develop their business more agilely, more digitally, more flexibly uh, through the digital platforms. So now we are on the way to Asia Digital Hub already. And uh, obviously that the signal connection is very, very important to drive this kind of technology. So in the past, what uh, Huawei has been done for support Asian Digital Hub. Okay, uh, Huawei actually has been in Thailand uh, developing business for more than 21 years. Uh, our mission is always grow in Thailand and contribute to Thailand. Uh, we're willing to uh, try endeavor to empower Thailand to move towards Thailand 4.0 and empower Thailand to be the ASEAN Digital Hub. So uh, for the past years, regarding the connectivity hub, uh, Huawei have helped the operators uh, to deploy the 2G, 3G, 4G network and also the home broadband networks, which makes Thailand has one of the best digital infrastructure in the world. Like for 5G, as we mentioned, now Thailand is leading in the whole ASEAN region. Even for home broadband, Thailand is now the top of the world's uh, countries uh, with the highest downloading speed for customer good experience. Uh, even some of the operators ranks number one in the world from Thailand. Uh, so for the cloud hub, data center and cloud hub, Huawei has decided to invest the first data, local data center in EEC since 2018. Uh, we are the only one uh, which has invested a local data center among all the public service, uh, public cloud service provider. Uh, we also invested the second node in Bangkok in 2019, which helped our cloud business uh, developing very fast. So we hope these two local uh, data cloud center uh, will help to empower more for the digital transformation, especially for the SMEs. And uh, we are also fully complying the PDPA regulations of Thailand to, to help to secure all the data securities. The third one is for the digital ecosystem, for the ecosystem hub. Uh, in this September last year, 2020, we announced the, to open the 5G Ecosystem Innovation Center, which is located in La Pau, where we partnered together with the DIPA, Digital Economy Promotion Agency. With this EIC, we are aiming to introduce uh, global and regional partners 
to join us together to form this 5G ecosystem, then we can use our global experience, our global expertise to try to empower the local SMEs, especially the uh, uh, application developers, the system integrators, to have more capability to build the 5G use case and promote the 5G usage and, uh, in, in the whole industry in Thailand. Uh, the last one is about the talent hub. For talent hub, we also set up our uh, Huawei ASEAN Academy in Bangkok uh, since 2019. For the past two years, we have tried to train and empower more than 20,000 talents, ICT talents, which we think is the key for the development of the digital transformation, also the development towards the ASEAN Digital Hub. Thank you for a lot of contribution to Thailand. So I can see a lot of projects and energy active from Huawei in the two year past. And what is the future plan from now? Thank you. Uh, we have a lot of um, plans actually uh, undergoing, uh, especially to try to help Thailand move towards the ASEAN Digital Hub. Uh, like for to have more for Thailand to become the talent hub, we are going to uh, open and launch a branch ASEAN Academy in EEC, which we're going to maybe announce very very soon. And we hope this uh, Huawei ASEAN Academy EEC branch uh, campus will help to empower more uh, digital talents which the country needs. Uh, also, we are going to invest the third uh, cloud data center in Thailand. We are now talking to our partners and we are now selecting for the nodes and the locations now. Hope this third node will help more to empower more SMEs to move towards the digital transformation. And uh, also, for the ecosystem for connectivity, we are still trying to introduce uh, our leading technologies and uh, with our global experience and expertise, especially from China. We know, we all know now China is developing 5G very fast. A lot of, um, use cases coming out very soon and, uh, with very good use case situation. So we're going to do more to introduce more expertise and experience to Thailand. It sounds very good. And, um, actually, if, uh, from EEC one hours, uh, in Wangjan Rayong, there is EECI that hosts by NASDA. And it will be a lot of, uh, um, technology company over there, maybe Huawei considering to, uh, set up something or some projects with the NASDA in EECI at Rayong. And, uh, now I have to say thank you for Kun Abel and Final questions. I would like to, to you to leave some message to Thai SME, please. Okay, thank you. Actually, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, show our appreciation to NASDA for your always great efforts, you know, to help the country for innovation, for digitalization, especially to help to empower the SMEs. And uh, it's our great pleasure to be part of this uh, annual uh, conference of NASDA and uh, to share some of our point of views here. Uh, we also uh, are very grateful to our corporations before and we look forward to future to have more collaborations to see how we can empower the SMEs together. Uh, that's one. The second one is uh, we are also uh, appreciated to the initiatives and the measures launched and uh, uh, implemented by the government towards the empowerment for the SMEs. Uh, we hope that uh, all the SMEs can get through this tough period of time and grow up very quickly with the digital transformation. Uh, we hope that SMEs can have more confidence and more capabilities. That is why, as we uh, said just now, we are trying to invest more and uh, put more efforts as the leading technology company and also the local citizenship here in Thailand, we sincerely would like to put more efforts to endeavorly try to uh, contribute more 
to help and empower the SMEs to move faster towards a digital transformation, to bring digital to every person, every home, every organization for a fully connected and intelligent Thailand. Thank you. So today, um, thank you very much, Kun Abel Teng, CEO of Huawei Technology Thailand, and uh, um, appreciate that you are with us for next 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Don't forget to go. I'm going to show you the answer to your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. I'm going to ask you a question for your question. Don't forget to ask you a question for your question. Thank you.